hummingbird came in through the sliding door, flew, like stood at her, looked at her and then flew out through the front door. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. yeah. Hey, Steve. How you doing, Greg? Pretty good. Um, we're hot on episode seven after a kind of quirky episode six. We had a, our first guest. We uh, had, had lots of stories going on. I don't have a follow-up yet. I'm still up at Miwok um, and hanging out at my brother's cabin, which is not a cabin. It's a beautiful home. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. So how have you been? I've been doing pretty good too, you know. Uh, I'm still trying to recover from the technical difficulties of last episode. but <laughs> we, I think we, I don't know if many people would know we had technical difficulties. I mean, we're still working on the sound. We're getting that better. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm trying to perfect it. We're trying to get better. Um, I'm sure when before the, we even, oh, go ahead. I'm sure when the comments start rolling in, we'll know if we had yeah. them or not. Yeah. Um, someday we'll have dozens of listeners. Um, before we start, wanted to what we didn't do last time was talk about how people can reach us outside the podcast. So you want to tell people like what what they should be looking for? So we're actually in the in the process of migrating our podcast right now from SoundCloud to Podbean. So we'll give you some more information on that shortly. But in the meantime, you can always reach us at birdbrag at gmail.com or feel free to check out our Instagram site. Uh, bird brag and leave us a comment there all right so welcome to bird brag everybody i'm greg and i'm steve and we're here to talk about nature and stuff and so uh first off before we start we always start with uh what are you drinking steve i went to uh old standby i'm going with a fine pilsner beer miller light look what i got no twinsies <laughs> almost i mean he's drinking out of a hokey can and i always go to the bottle but whatever okay, I'm, I'm gonna pour it oh, my, but, oh my look at that beautiful wine glass. chalice look at that chalice all right cheers buddy cheers so uh someday we'll be sponsored by miller light i, prom <laughs> that's I promise that's the dream you. that's the dream uh, i shouldn't promise you that's the dream that's the dream um cheers what are we uh do we have a choice today or are we talking do you have no we want to talk about no choices, Greg. I, I've found that it's not better than not that. giving I'm too not many choices that anymore. Okay, yeah. what are we talking about today? So today we're going to talk about a diminutive bird called the bush tit. You just, I mean, I just, you, I'm smiling. If everyone can see, I'm smiling ear to ear. You I'm can check us out child. on YouTube. If I'm, you want such, to see I'm such a child. <laughs> I am the ultimate child. Why did we, other than entertaining me just by the, by the title, what, what and why did we pick this bird? I mean, entertainment value alone should be enough, but yeah, this I bird, agree. so it's, it's a tiny, tiny bird, but what it lacks in size, it makes up for in cuteness and charisma and oh, it just puts itself out there. This, this bird is it's, uh, I know that I've probably said this about every single thing we've talked about, but it's definitely one of my favorites. All right. So that should be our tag, start... my tagline. What's that? One of my favorites. It's like Martha Stewart. It's a good thing. Oh, one, one of my of favorites. My... I like that. I like that. It's a good thing. Okay. So, um, like we always start, like paint the picture for us, like for our listeners of when I'm out, uh, bird watching, what am I looking for? So again, like a lot of birds, this this is one that you might be drawn to because you hear it before you see it. Um, a lot of high chirping sounds. They're very gregarious. So you'll see them in small flocks of maybe eight to 10, up to 40 sometimes in, in non-breeding season. Um, but it's a really tiny bird. They're they're not real colorful or anything like that. They're they're pretty much a uniform gray. Um, they have a little bit of brown on their on their face, but not not too much. But they're they're a real tiny, just super cute bird. So they have a real what's, what's tiny? What, what like what does tiny mean? So they have a really long tail, which is about an inch and a half long, and their total length, including their tail, is about three inches long. So yeah. if you figure the little body and head combined on this bird is about an inch and a half long, and the rest of it is an inch and a half worth of tail. Wait, let me let me push my sound effects button. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, that's yeah, the that one we look for. That's for this. the button that I had. That's the, that's the one that I have. That's the only sound effect button I have. I like it. So, yeah. so this bird is it kind of it kind of reminds me of a little small feathery ball with a long tail sticking out of it because they're they're kind of round their head. They don't really have much of a neck. They have this head and round body that all kind of blends into one, and then a little tail sticking out. So they're 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 pretty cute, and they have a little tiny tiny cute bill on them. They're not like a big big giant kingfisher bill or a Swainson's hawk that's looking to tear you up. It's just an overall cuteness vibe that that's hard to resist. Where would we find, okay, so where would we find these or that where are they, where are they located? So these, these birds are, uh, they, they breed just barely up into Canada. They get into British Columbia and then they kind of make a diagonal down to Texas um, and all the way over to the Pacific coast and down into Mexico. And they, they uh, breed in all those locations. They're not um, really a migratory bird, although some of the populations that live in the mountains, they, they, they can be found up to over 11,000 feet. So some of those populations come down elevation in the winter time, although they're not making a true you know, north-south migration like you typically think of. And how big, we talked about oh, several times different, how, how some birds migrate short distances and long distance. What, what, is the, what is the migratory proclivity of these guys? So like I said, they're, they're not really migratory. You'll, you'll find them in, in the, the areas they breed typically year round, unless there's a, there's a, a, an elevational migration, but that would just be basically kind of down slope. You know, like if you take the chairlift up to the top of the mountain, it's, it's too cold up there. So you cruise back down to the lodge and, and have a, a warm snuggly by the fire. That's kind of what we're talking here. So they're, but I, I misunderstood, I guess. So they're spread out all the way from Mexico to Vancouver, but those, it, those birds won't travel. Each bird won't travel very far. Right. They're pretty much resident in those areas Got and they, they stay in, in those areas year round. Yeah. So this bird's not flying to Hawaii. Like we, we were just talking about with. Definitely uh, not. Definitely not right. going to see it in Hawaii. Who we talked about in the last episode, we talked about the. The belted kingfisher. The, the belted kingfisher could, could go thousands of miles. This guy's not going to do that. Um, all right. So what about we in, um, oh, I have a hummingbird story for you later too. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the egg with a bird this small. Uh, let's talk about their clutches. Okay. <laughs> clutches. <laughs> I mean, are you good? You have to teach me a couple other facts that, that stick with me like the clutch yeah. does. Now, I mean, am I yeah. using that correctly? Is it their clutch? Not their clutches. Well, is clutches not plural? Well, they can have multiple clutches in a, in a season. In fact, bush tits have one or two clutches in a season. All right. Um, but their clutch size, yes. in this case, uh, it's anywhere from four to ten eggs. Okay. Um, they're real small eggs, as you might expect from a small bird. Are they coffee bean size? They're pretty much coffee <laughs> bean size, yeah. Yeah, they're they're about a half inch long. And, and like a hummingbird, they the the whole process is really quick they the eggs hatch in about 12 or 13 days and then about 18 days later the birds are flying and and uh i i know that's always kind of a impressive thing i mean don't we all wish our kids would you know reach maturity after 18 days sometimes yeah no yeah i would I, love i would love that i would have loved I, that if I have to hear one more time how quickly it went by, I think I might throw up. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready for this to be over. Um, but uh, it, speaking of breeding, though, like one of the, the more interesting things about these guys is is uh, they're, they are pretty amazing nest architects. So it's these little tiny birds, and they build these kind of hanging pendulous nests that are about a foot long. They kind of look like a, like an old dirty sock that's maybe full of coins, you know, to hit hit someone with in, in case of emergency, hanging down from a tree. And they build them with spider webs and lichen and moss and plant material. And up near the top of the nest, they construct a, it's almost a perfectly round hole that they can actually go into the nest and, and lay the eggs in. And they line the nest with uh, feathers and fur and things like that to make it all nice and cozy. Well, does, and like the hummingbird, does the nest get bigger as the as the young get bigger? So they're 
they're kind of stretchy, um, but they typically uh, stretch them out as they're building them. And, and kind of another interesting thing about bush tits that isn't very common in the bird world is sometimes maybe half of the half of the pairs they'll actually have helpers that help them build nests and feed the young, which isn't isn't a common thing at all. And so when they're building this nest. Um, they will actually all sleep in the nest every night. So that, I mean, that's pretty cute if you're, if you're asking me. I mean, hashtag cute as like, where this is like the third thing that you, you've said on, on this one. Yeah. So I mean, this bird is pretty much an overload of cuteness. Um, well, and you, you talked that they kind of are found together. These aren't lonesome birds, like some other ones, like we're, we're going to find groups of these birds together. We're going to find a flock. Uh, yeah, for, bush, bush tits together. Yeah, for the most part, you'll you find them in small flocks, and like I said, you hear them. Maybe in a, in a little bit. Uh, actually, maybe right now we'll we'll pull out what they sound like when you you kind of hear a, a flock of them together, and it probably you know adds a little bit to their safety because you have more eyes looking out for for predators. There's a lot of little hawks that like to eat eat small birds, and and they can they can uh, warn each other. But here's here's kind of what a, a flock of them would sound like. That's pretty cute. And so you, you hear that and then you kind of see them and they're, they're super active. They're always hopping from branch to branch. They turn upside down when they're feeding on these little tiny insects in the leaves. And uh, there, it's just like constant motion. And actually during migration, a lot of bush tits aren't migrating, but other migratory songbirds will, will join up with these bush tit flocks. So a lot of times if you hear a, a bush tit flock, you, you might spend some time looking at them for some of the other, you know, uh, neotropical migrant warblers that might be with them. And I think they also like to hang out with these bush tit flocks so that they can also get some benefit from all those eyes on, on predators to, to warn them of, uh, of a hawk in the area. Um, so describe their diet to me, like, are these guys being so small, I got to imagine that it's going to be a lot of insects and other things like that at this point. Yeah. So it, one thing that is kind of interesting. So they, they do eat primarily insects, although they, they will eat some, some small seeds occasionally, but primarily they exist on insects. I mean, a lot of insect eating birds, they have large bills with a wide gaping mouth so that they can catch these things easier. But I think bush tits, since they're so small and with that small bill, they focus on, on some of the smaller insects like uh, aphids and little spiders and things like that that aren't, aren't trying to fly away or crawling, mm -hmm. but they're things that they can pick at and, and pull off the leaves that are a little bit easier for them to catch and, and they don't have to rely on a, a big mouth to kind of funnel that prey into their, their mouth. They're not super, they're not aerial predators catching things out of the air, but they kind of glean these little tiny insects off of the leaves. And, you know, you'll see, like I said, you'll see them hanging upside down, kind of like chickadees do. They're actually mm -hmm. very closely related to chickadees, but, um, and, and just pick these little tiny insects off the leaves. And, you know, it's, it's pretty much a, if you're a bird that small, one, one thing about these small birds like that is when it does get cold and since they don't migrate, they stay in kind of these cold climates they, they lose body heat super fast. I mean, the bigger you are, the less surface area to body mass you have to, to kind of lose that, that heat to the environment. And so they really need to eat a lot of insects to, to kind of maintain their metabolism. And, and that's why they, they, you know, line their nest with uh, feathers and fur for insulation. And they'll, they'll actually roost together when they're uh, mm -hmm. building a nest and, and raising young together. All right. I love these little guys. Is there any last facts that you want to impart the, the listeners with that, that I missed? So, like I said, they're, they're pretty closely re related to chickadees, which are in a family that's called the, that's kind of uh, generically called the true tits. But the bush tits are actually in their, their own family called, uh, that, that are called the long-tailed tits. And out of all the long-tailed tits, they are the only long-tailed tit that's found uh, in North America. So they're kind of, and they're the only bird that's in their genus. So that's a, they're a fairly unique bird uh, genetically. Where would other long-tailed tits be found? 
So most of them are in the, in the in the old world. So not even in South America. They'll be in the old world in Europe. And, and hmm. uh, there are some in Africa, but mostly in the Northern Hemisphere. So the globe, these guys are globe trotters. Well, not the bush well, tail. Yes, but the family. The family, the family, the family. is. Yeah, they're they're represented throughout throughout the the northern hemisphere. All right, pretty awesome. Uh, well, there we go. All right, so keeping before we get to to Greg's five minutes, um, I have two things. Two things. One, a hummingbird story. These are from these are from listeners, by the way. Um, Whoa. One is a, a hummingbird story where my friend had, uh, she's, everyone's working from home these days. Everyone knows that. Lives in an apartment in San Diego, uh, tiny. She, on the first floor, had her, was working, had her patio door open and her front door open, which were, you know, cross. Hummingbird came in through the sliding door flew like stood at her looked at her and then flew out through the front door <laughs> I was like, I'm, yeah the next day she had her phone ready same thing happened again and she captured it on her phone no way this time the bird came in through the slider it's got to be the same bird right I checked out an orchid in the room came back and then flew out again and she got part of it on <laughs> on phone did it go out the front door again or back out the, the front door again? Went out the front door again. That is crazy. Like a, a flyby. Did she bu the, it buzz the tower? The hummingbird buzzed the tower. Um, all right. Like so blitz. then I <laughs> so then have another one where someone's asking if you can identify a bird. What kind of bird is this? Oh. Anyone wait, wait. know? And so I'm not gonna tell you what they thought it was, but I'm gonna are you ready? Well, can you first, uh, first, what I want to know is where they are, because that's, that's important. Southern California. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. Oh, you got a picture. Oh, we got a baby bird here. So baby birds can be tough, but you know what, Greg? I'm, I'm like uh, 94. Uh, oh, wait, I, I, have I'm, another, I have another photo. Hold on. Oh, okay. Before Land, I. It landed, landed on his head. No way. Okay, can you get it even closer? Okay, so I, I'm not 100% sure because, yeah. no, because that's how I roll. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that is one of our previous guests on Bird Brag. What would that be? Well, we've gone through uh, Poinces Hawk. No, probably too big. Not Poinces Hawk. Let's see, episode two that was like something else right that wasn't even a bird no that was a pike minnow we did the hummingbird black chin yep. hummingbird it's not that yep, not that last episode was kingfisher we did uh, uh what was the one we did the michael jordan that was the black phoebe is that a phoebe i i'm pretty sure it's a black phoebe but it, it's tough to be 100 percent on it all right so people we're gonna put this on bird brag instagram I'm going to send, uh, we're going to, we're going to post this. Steve's going to give, uh, he'll get a better look at it. And, um, and then we're going to ask you guys to, to see if, if Steve's right on that. So go to our Instagram to see the photo and to see it's a really, it's a really cool thing. Um, all right. So, Ooh, I just knocked that. All right, so it's time for my five minutes, Steve. And what I um, decided, and it was because I'm up here in this awesome place, my brother's place, the cabin, um, and I opened the freezer, and inside the freezer is a box of It's It. Do you know, I know you know, because we, we were going to talk about this, but I text Steve immediately, and I'm like, do you know what an It's It is? He's like, of course I know what an it's it is. For our yeah. listeners who don't know what an it's it is, how would you describe? How would you describe it? And then I'll describe it. Okay, so the classic it's it to me, it's two oatmeal cookies surrounding a slab of vanilla ice cream, all coated in a thin layer of chocolate that just melts into your mouth so what i didn't realize growing up i grew up in the bay area is that they're made in the bay area they're from right. the bay area when and so i grew up with them like they were like a staple in our freezer 
they were a treat. I shouldn't say they're a staple. It wasn't surprising. <laughs> That's not true either. I, but when we got them, it was a treat. But I didn't realize it was such a treat because it was a regional treat. When did you learn about its its? So I had no idea what an its it was growing up. And then I came over to Northern California for college. And I don't think I learned what it was until I met what ultimately became my future wife and probably is a good wait, your, part your of the first wife? I got married. Yeah, my first wife. Okay. And uh, and she basically taught me what an it was. Okay, so and for, not the, for the I listeners was, who don't 20, know, 20 years old. we have Indonesian listeners apparently. So what, um, if you don't, it's IT apostrophe S, IT, space. It's it. And so what I told Steve is I'm like, go to the store and get, there it is for people who can see it on the YouTube. Um, get it's it, get an it's it. And we're going to do, we're going to do uh, an it's it. So I got a mint it's it which is my favorite. And what so did you get? That's, that's my, so I, I think there's only three flavors and, and so my, my ranking. Another? Okay, go ahead. My ranking goes vanilla. Yes. What I chose cappuccino mm. and then mint chip is number three. Mm. I thought there were, there's, so there's no chocolate. Bur- I don't, I guess I don't remember ever. I mean, it, and when it started, when I remember there was only one flavor, there was only, I mean, when the mint came out, it was like a big deal when I was a kid. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to open my sandwich and uh, we're going to describe. And like Steve said, he, it, it's big. It's, it's hockey puck size. This is a hockey yeah. puck size ice cream it's sandwich. Exactly. Hockey puck with, size. With two oatmeal cookies, ice cream in the middle, but then it's chocolate dipped all around. So it's chocolate dipped. Oh, look at that. See, a lot of people think that this should be <coughs> made with chocolate chip cookies, but I think the oatmeal no. is an amazing yes. decision. Oh, I, I agree. It's like a little salt, like there's a little saltiness and the sweetness. So yeah. cheers. We're digging in. Mm. All right. Oh, I love the cappuccino. I'm going to try that. I don't know if I've ever tried the cappuccino side. It's really good. Oh, man. What a treat. Well, <laughs> so that's for everybody. All right. What did we learn today as we eat our It's It? Oh. We, learned, we learned the bush tit is cute. First thing, first first adjective we're going to put into the bush, bush tit. Well, I guess the first thing is that you, Steve knew it would make me laugh. <laughs> Co- coffee bean size eggs. Of course. Um, last time we had good engineers. Now, Steve, the way Steve described the bush tit is nest architects. Mm. I wrote that. Did nest, I say that? Yeah, nest architects. No way. Nest architects. We'll go back and prove it. Okay. Um, they're in the chickadee family. Which nope, was, nope. Wait, what? I misunderstood close, that? Close to them. Oh, they're close to a chickadee. Okay. Yeah. And on a podcast, you could say on a bird on a bird podcast podcast, you can say long tail teats and get away with it. Long tail tits. Yeah. Get away with it. Yeah. We learned I had a hummingbird story. And we also um we also go to the Instagram, go to the Instagram, as Steve calls it the Instagram, and see if he's right. Um, and he, he's going to get a better view of it too. So it's a mystery um, bird. All right. Yeah. The mystery bird. All right, buddy. Um, I think, uh, episode seven, another success. Enjoyed push, it. Push tits and, and it's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it. um, all right. Well, I'll, uh, signing off. We'll talk soon. All right. See you later, Greg. See you later.